Welcome to another video on terrarium elements. Today I'm going to be talking all about moss, everybody's favourite. Everybody is always so fascinated by it and I get asked loads of questions about it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the different types, the three main types that you can get and use in terrariums and also the benefits of it and a few other tips on keeping it nice and healthy. Now moss comes in lots of different shapes and sizes, different forms, all of which can be used in various ways in terrariums. So I'm going to talk about the three most popular, which are cushion or bun moss, flat or sheet moss and sphagnum moss. All three of these can be used in different ways in a terrarium, so I'm going to talk to you about how they can be used and the benefits of each. I'm going to start by talking about cushion moss and here is an enormous piece of cushion moss. It's also known as bun moss and the reason it's known as either of those names is simply because of the shape. You can see it is in like a arched form. It does literally look like a pillow or, or a cushion and it also looks a bit like a bun so that's why it has got the name cushion or bun moss is because of the shape. Now you can see it's really really tightly packed, it's really lush green and it feels slightly velvety to touch. Bun moss is a really good option for terrariums simply because it really helps regulate the moisture inside and also keep everything nice and filtered. An often overlooked fact about this moss is that it actually recycles a lot more CO2 than trees do, which makes it excellent for inside a terrarium because it's going to keep the whole environment nice and clean and fresh. You can buy it in different sizes, I sell it on my website. This is an exceptionally large piece, but I sell it online on my website in smaller pieces such as this sort of size, or even in really tiny pieces like this which are super cute and work really well in smaller terrariums. So that's moss number one. Now moss number two is known as sphagnum moss and it's this thick, fluffy, clumpy type of moss that you may have seen elsewhere because sometimes it's used in floral displays as well. It holds moisture really well. So if you're doing eco-friendly florist displays, which is what I do at weddings, I'll always use this as a base to help keep the flowers fresh. And it's fabulous for lots of different things, but in a terrarium, you can use it as a layer. So in my last video, I spoke about the different layers that you can put in terrariums. You could actually use this to put in a layer of the soil. And again, it'll help with the filtration and just help keep everything nice and fresh. Moss number three is this stuff which is known as sheet moss or flat moss and sometimes carpet moss and you can see why because it literally is like a carpet. It's a long flat sheet of moss with lots of different textures in there so it's not as smooth as the cushion moss. It has lots of different types of moss growing within this structure but it, again it works really well in terrariums for creating a nice layer on the top. It can kind of look like grass inside a large terrarium and it will grow quite readily in any terrarium whereas the cushion moss doesn't grow so quickly but this stuff does. So if you're looking for something that's going to grow and cover everything you want to buy the flat moss really. Now a little bit of info about all the different types of mosses that I've just discussed. They all need to have lots of moisture. That's why they all work really well in terrariums because mosses thrive from moisture and a terrarium is always nice and humid and moist on the inside, hence why they work so well inside terrariums. If you're wondering on how to place it in a terrarium, it's really simple. Just take your piece of moss, you can see the bottom quite clearly. Any of them will have like a brownie coloured bottom or sometimes a beigey bottom and then a nice green top. And all you need to do is literally place it on top of the soil. You don't need to dig it in very far. You can make a little dent in the soil if you want and pop it in, but that is literally all you need to do is just lay it on top of the soil and it will be quite happy. Make sure if you can, before you pop it in the tray, and give it a good soak in water, preferably rainwater if you can get hold of rainwater, and then just pop it in so it's nice and damp when it goes into the terrarium. Don't worry if you can't get hold of rainwater, just boil some tap water and use that instead and let it cool obviously, um, and then pop it straight in. So it's super easy to look after. And actually, if you're looking at making a mossarium instead of a terrarium, you can just put this inside a glass jar or vessel as it is. It doesn't even need soil to survive. The main thing is that it's kept damp and moist and it's kept out of direct sunlight. If you think about moss in its natural form, like where you might find it, it's always found in dark areas of forest or woodland, or it's found in areas of the garden which have no sun. Sometimes you find it on your roof, perhaps, where under the tiles, where the sun doesn't quite reach. That's the kind of place it likes. It's nice and damp and away from any bright direct sunlight because it just won't survive. It'll start to turn yellow and crispy and that's how you know your moss isn't quite healthy enough. It just starts to discolour and then go a bit dry and fluffy on the top. If that happens give it a really good soak and it should survive. Moss is actually incredibly hardy so if you soak it again it probably will come back to life um, but sometimes it might be too far gone. It's super easy to look after and makes a really good addition to any terrarium. Obviously you cannot use moss in an open terrarium because it needs to be kept damp. It doesn't work if you put it with cacti or succulents because they like dry and this likes damp so obviously you need to keep it away from cacti and succulents but any other kind of plants and any other type of closed terrarium it will work brilliantly. 
Finally, if you're thinking of going into a local forest or woodland and taking some moss, please don't do that. It is actually illegal to harvest it from the wild because it's a protected species. The reason it's protected is because it's so good for air quality that it helps keep our environment nice and healthy. And so by law, you are not allowed to take it from the wild. So please don't do that. I do sell moss on my website if you want to buy some for your terrarium. It's not expensive or there are other places online that sell it as well. But please don't go and take it from the wild. So I hope you've enjoyed this video about moss. If you have any other questions about it, please drop me a line. I know that, that people are generally fascinated by it and it is a really cool plant. It's really, really interesting and it makes such a good addition to a terrarium. Um, but yeah, any other questions, just give me a shout. And when I do my full tutorial on how to put the terrarium together, I will include the different types of moss and how to use them. I'll see you then.